My name is Zach Ochoga, and I'm pastor of C6 Church in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. I want to especially thank you for joining us in this service online. Thank you for choosing to be a part of this service. Would you kindly take the time before the service is over to fill out our digital connection card? Would like to know that you are here and would like to be in touch with you and pray for you. We are starting a brand new series today titled Christmas Gifts. Before we dive into the teaching for today, please join us in this song as my friend Doug Hurt leads us in worship. And I'll be back.
Welcome back. So we're starting a brand new series today titled Christmas Gifts. Before we dive into the teaching, please say a word of prayer with me. Father in heaven, speak to us today. Father in heaven, give us gifts today that will change our lives. Father in heaven, help us see the gifts you've, al you've already given us so that we utilize those gifts to your praise and glory and to the betterment of the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So we are in a season of giving and receiving gifts. One of the reasons that I like the Christmas season is the gifts. I love gifts, especially if the gifts are the kind of gifts that I like. I love gifts. I'm reminded of some of the first gifts that I received when I first came to the United States. My father-in-law got me a power drill. I still use it till today. It's been so useful, <laughs> you know, in, in my life. Uh, as, as, you know, as a homeowner, you, you, you do a lot of pr projects around the house, and that drill has just been super useful. This is the season of giving and receiving gifts. We're going to be talking about not just gifts that you give at Christmas, but we're going to be talking about gifts that you should give all the time. So it's not just Christmas gifts, as in the title, but Christmas gifts that should be given before Christmas, during Christmas, and after Christmas. This season is also a season that people think about their families. It's a time that your mind goes to your family. It's a time that most families come together to celebrate Christmas. Now, for many people, it's a time of joy. It's a time of fun. They look forward to this time. They're excited to get back together with family. For some people, it can be a sad moment, a sad season. It could even be depressing because this is the season that they remember the loved ones that they have lost. Or it's a season that it becomes more real to them that they don't really have family that they could share the season with. Whatever the situation is, it's a time that we all think about family. And I hope that in today's teaching, irrespective of where you fall, whether in the group of those who have family that they look forward to be reunited with, to, to get together with, or you fall in the group of those who find it a very sad season, I hope that from the gifts that we'll talk about today, you'll find them meaningful in your life. I want us to look at a, a scripture in 1 Timothy chapter 5 to show us what the Bible says and thinks about family. 1 Timothy chapter 5 and verse 8. But those who wouldn't care for their relatives, especially those in their own household, have denied the true faith. Such people are worse than unbelievers. Wow. This scripture teaches us that God wants us to care for our families. So when you think about your family in this season, it is right. It is biblical. Because God wants us to care for our families. As a matter of fact, Caring for your family is a testimony of your faith in Jesus Christ. Caring your family shows to the world what God's heart is for people. And this is why it is so important in this season and beyond this season that you show that you care for your family and that you give 
gifts to your family. I want to share with you today five Christmas gifts that you can share with your family, that you can give your family, not just this Christmas, even before Christmas, and also continuously after Christmas. Five gifts to give to your family this Christmas, before this Christmas, and continuously after this Christmas. It is said that charity begins at home. You, you know, it means, what that simply means is I, I can't be demonstrating to other people that I care about them and I love them and I don't do that to my family. I have to start by showing my family that I care about them. So what are these five gifts? How do we start this charity from home? What are these five gifts that you can give? Number one, give the gift of prayer. Give the gift of prayer. Look at Luke chapter 11 and verse 9. And so I tell you, keep on asking, this is Jesus speaking, and you'll receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking and you will find. Keep on knocking and the door will be opened to you. This is deep. It means that if I want to receive, I must ask. And it, it doesn't just say to ask, but I, I should keep on asking. If I want a door to be open to me, I should knock. I shouldn't just knock, but keep on knocking. If I want to find something in life, I should keep seeking. I should keep searching. I shouldn't just seek for a while, but keep on seeking. This is a powerful principle Jesus shared about prayer. This means that there are things that I will not get if I don't seek for them in prayer, if I don't ask for them in prayer. This means that there are things you will not get if you don't ask for them in prayer. You know, I, I, I heard a friend of mine teaching, and, he, and he, he talks about three groups of, you know, things, three categories of things that God, God will do or will not do. The one category is, is the things that God will do no matter what. It doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't matter what you pray or don't pray. God will do it. God will do them. The second category is, 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 are, is, the, is the category of the things that God will not do. No matter how hard I pray and how hard and long I fast, he's not going to do them. No matter what you do, no matter what we do, he will not do them. And then the third category which I think is the biggest, the largest. So if you think of the first two categories as folders, and then you think of this third category I'm about to mention as a whole cabinet of files. This third category is the category of God, of the things that God will do only, I repeat, only if we ask for them in prayer. There are so many things that God wants to do, but he's waiting for us to pray. And he's not waiting for us to pray just once. There are things that you will just pray once and he will do them. And there are things that he will wait for you to pray several times before he does them. He says, keep on asking. He that keeps on asking will receive what he or she asks for. Now, one gift that you can give your family is the gift of prayer. How many things does God want to do in your family that he's not done yet because you've not asked him? You've not asked him to do them. There are things that God wants to do in the lives of, of, of your kids, in the lives of your parents, in the lives of your siblings. Name them. 
but he's not done them yet because you've not asked him. Prayer will change the future of your family. And that is why a big, powerful gift that you can give to your family is to pray. A significant gift that you can give your family in this season is the gift of prayer. God wants to step into the story of your family. God wants to step into the life of the members of your family. But you'll have to invite him through prayer. I want to give you a homework. I want you to write this scripture down. Genesis chapter 18. I would love for you to read the whole chapter, but if you can't, read verses 16 through 33. This is God sending angels to go to Sodom and Gomorrah because he was going to destroy them. And Abraham began to intercede for Sodom and Gomorrah, not because of the city, but because of his family, his nephew who lived there. And he said, oh, oh, oh God, you know, righteous, true judge. Would you destroy the city even if there were 50 peop righteous people in it? God said he would not. And Abraham said, okay, what about 45? He said he would not. And he keeps on going and he says, would you destroy the city if there were 10 righteous people? And God said, no, he would not. And guess what? Abraham stopped there. He did not ask any more than 10. And God could not find 10 righteous people in that city. And that city was destroyed. So what changes could happen and take place in the life of your family if you would just take the time to pray? I'm already praying for my kids. I'm praying for my kids. You know, I have four girls and one boy. And some of the things that I'm praying for them is, I'm praying that they'll all come to know Jesus, love him, and serve him. I'm praying for who they'll get married to. I don't want them to marry a loser. I don't want them to marry someone who has no affection for Jesus Christ and is not a follower of Jesus Christ. I want them to marry the right person the right person that will help them fulfill God's will, God's plans, and God's purposes for their lives. I'm praying that God will protect them from evil. I'm praying that God will help them fulfill his plan and purpose for their lives. These are prayers I'm praying for my kids. I pray for Holly too. I pray God's blessings upon her life. I, I pray for God's protection over her. I pray for her health. I pray that God will help her be the woman that he wants her to be. I pray that God will help her fulfill his plans and his purposes for her life. I don't believe that because I'm married to her, she should not fulfill the plans and purposes of God for her. What prayers are you praying for your family? A gift that you can give in this season to your family is the gift of prayer. No family is perfect, so I want to encourage you, just like I pray for my imperfect family, that you too will be praying for your imperfect family. The second gift to give this Christmas, before this Christmas, after this Christmas, is this. Give the gift of connection. Give the gift of connection. Part of caring for my family is spending time with them. Part of caring for my family is spending time with them. You know, as, as, as someone who has a job to do, I have to learn to strike the balance between my work and my family. I have to make my family a high priori priority. I have to make sure that I don't sacrifice my family on the altar of my job. It can be hard. There will be conflicts in trying to make sure that you don't sacrifice your family 
on the altar of your business or your job. There are days that I have 15-hour days, long, long days, and I always try to make up for, with my family, to make up for those long days. You know, a day I was in the office at night, I was working, um, the phone rings, and I think it's Holly calling, and I say, hey, hi, babe, and it's my daughter, and she says, hey, dad, when are you going to come home? And I said, soon. She said, please come, because home is not the same without you. Well, I'm thankful that my kids can express that to me, because one of the gifts that I can give to my family is connection, to stay connected to them, to spend time with them, to be in touch with them. So even when I travel, I'm in touch with them. When I'm at home, I am connected with them. Someone put it this way, you don't want to be together but be apart. It is possible for you to be together in the same house at the same time and yet be apart in terms of connection. You want to be connected. One of the rules that Holly has helped to implement and enforce at, at home is that when we sit at the, at the dining table to eat, no one should be scrolling through their phone or reading a book or doing, we need to be engaged with each other. And interestingly, my oldest daughter came up with, with a number of questions that we could use, you know, to talk, talk about while eating. She's just eight years old, by the way, you know. And so many times while we're, we're, we're eating together as a family, she'll bring out this box of cards she got, and, and she'll ask a question, and then we'll all talk about that. We're spending time together. We are, we, are, we are connecting together. So when I, when I spend time with my family like that, I'm giving them the gift of connection. You know, recently Holly made me understand of a strategy of spending 10 minutes with each child each day. 10 minutes. It helps them know that you, 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 you have them in mind and you care about them as a person and that they are not just one of a bunch. Now, if you have an only child, you probably don't have that problem, you know. And I've not done that every day. I've not been able to do that every day. And, and I'm still working on that. But I've done it many times where I have had to, you know, to time myself and spend about 10 minutes or more with each child each day, looking them in the face, spending time with them so that they know this is our connecting time. You know, apart from any other thing we do that day. One of the gifts that you can give your family is connection. With Holly, it's so easy that we are busy taking care of the kids that we don't spend time with each other. And so we have to be intentional about spending time with each other to connect. And, and, and you may have family like your parents who may not be at home or you may not even be the one at home or your siblings elsewhere. What do you do to connect with them? How about this season you give your family the gift of connection. You know, sadly, sometimes we spend more time with people outside of our family than with people in our family. Sadly, sometimes we connect more with people outside of our family rather than with people in our family. Would you join me in making a decision today that you are going to make your family the priority in terms of connection? You want to connect more with your spouse than with someone else outside. You want to connect more with your kids than with someone else just out there. You want to connect more with your parents. Be intentional about connecting with your family. One of the things that I've learned is that if I don't schedule time with my family, it could easily slip by and other things will overtake my day. So many times, not I don't do it every day, but many times what I do in the morning or the evening before the next day, is to try to set up, set three to five goals that I feel are so important that if I don't do other things, but I do those three to five goals, I, I will feel accomplished. And there are several times that I've had to write down as a goal for the day, spending time 
with my family. Because it's easy for you to be at home and, and not be there. <laughs> but when I put it down as a goal, I know that, oh, now I need to be there with them even though uh, I, I'm at home. So schedule that time. Keep in touch. When we're done, when you're done listening to this teaching, this moment, would you pick up your phone and make a call to someone in your family and say, hey, I'm just checking on you to find out how you're doing. Who is that member of your family you've not spoken to in a long time? Would you just make a call to that person? Would you set a goal this week for several times this week to connect with your family? Give them the gift of connection. The third gift to give this Christmas season before, during, and after to your family is this. Give the gift of honor to your parents. Look at Ephesians 6 verses 1 through 2. It says, children, obey your parents and the Lord for this is right. Honor, and you could underline that word, honor. You could circle that word, honor. Honor your father and mother. This is the first commandment with a promise. Wow. Honor your father and mother. This is the first commandment with a promise. You know, I, I imagine that just this statement arouses different things in the minds of Several of you listening to me. Now, for those of you who have great parents, you grew up in great families, this is not a problem. You're like, oh, yeah. But there are some of you who the thought that might be going on in your mind would be, I don't have honorable parents. How do I get to honor them? It is easier to honor honorable parents than to honor dishonorable parents. Let's face it, statistics and research show that several people have been violated, abused, and hurt by their parents. We're talking about the very people that are supposed to protect their kids from harm, protect their kids from abuse, protect their kids from being violated, those same parents have done all these to their kids. And then when you hear uh, a, a statement such as this, honor your father and mother, you go like, oh God, if, if you only knew who my parents are, you would not ask me to do this. Neither would you expect this of me. God knows your parents. God knows your parents. And he expects it of you. He expects you to honor them. I have learned in my life how to honor my parents even when I don't feel like doing it. It is in obedience to God. And I'm sure that you can do it as well. You don't, God is not asking you to feel so good and so excited before you do it. He just wants you to obey. Watch this. There's a blessing, an incentive attached to the promise. It says, if you honor your father and mother, if you look at it in Exodus chapter uh, is it 20 or 22, it says you shall live long in the land. That's why Paul says it's the only command that has a blessing. One of the reasons why many people's lives are miserable is because they don't honor their parents. And it doesn't matter what your parents did to you. God just expects you to honor them. What are some of the ways that you can honor your parents? Even if your parents have abused you, you still see them as your parents. Now, God is not saying you should have zero boundaries. That's not what God is saying. God is saying you should attach a weight to that relationship. Attach a weight to the fact that they are your parents. 
And so when scripture says, honor your parents, respect them, listen to them, ask them of their opinion from time to time. Not you make up your mind and you say, oh, I'm just asking of your opinion. No, 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 no. You truly ask them of your opinion. It is honor, especially when they don't deserve it. It is honor. Help them. Bring them relief when they need relief. Now, set all the boundaries that you need, that you need to set while honoring your parents. I promise you, based on the integrity of God's word, God will bless you. You'll see the blessing of God take place in your life. And if you have struggled with this aspect of how on earth can I honor my parents, especially when they have hurt me so badly and so deeply, it leads us to the next gift that you can give to your family. The fourth gift that you can give to your family this season and always is, the, is this, give the gift of forgiveness. Give the gift of forgiveness. Look at Colossians 3 and verse 13. Since God chose you to be the holy people he loves, you must clothe yourselves with the tender-hearted mercy, with tender-hearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Verse 13, let's read it together. Make allowance for each other's faults and forgive anyone who offends you. Remember, the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. The Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. How do you get the power and ability to forgive? Especially when you've been hurt. You get the power and ability to forgive because God in Christ Jesus forgave you. The premise upon which God asks you to forgive your family is this, that he forgave you. It was our sins that put Jesus on the cross. He died a gory death because of our sins so that he could reconcile us back to God. And what God is asking is because he has forgiven you and me in Jesus Christ, we should also forgive others. So when you think about the struggle to forgive anybody, Think about how God has forgiven you. It makes it a little easier to forgive. Understanding that you have been forgiven by God. Only the truly forgiven can forgive. And if you don't embrace the fact that God has forgiven you, you will struggle. To forgive others. Remember I said, my family is imperfect, your family is imperfect. There, there is no perfect family. We will hurt each other. We all have our faults. But what do we do? One big gift that we can give always is the gift of forgiveness. I'd like to add, to forgive does not mean to have no boundary. To forgive does not mean to allow somebody violate you again and again. And you keep saying, oh, I've forgiven, I forgive, I forgive. No. To forgive means you don't hold something against someone and you don't let it hold you, unshackle you down. At the same time, you do not give the person permission to do it to you again. The gift of forgiveness. I want to urge you. That that desire in you to see that someone be paid for how they've hurt you, let it go. Let it go. And let God take care of things. 
the fifth and final gift I want to talk about today, to give this Christmas, before Christmas, and always, is this. Give the gift of service. Give the gift of service. In Matthew 7, Matthew 20, 27 through 28, it says, And whoever wants to be first among you must become your slave. For even the Son of Man, that is Jesus, came not to be served, but to serve others and to give his life as a ransom for many. You know, I know of people who are more eager and optimistic, uh, more eager and excited to serve people who are not members of their family than to serve members of their family. That is not how it should be. Charity starts at home. It starts from home. Remember 1 Timothy 5.8. You have to care for your own family. You have to care for your own family. So how can you serve your family? Jesus encourages us to serve. And you have to start from your family. You have to start from your family. How can you serve your family? How can you serve members of your family? How can you show them that you care, that you're there for them? What are their needs? And what can you do about their needs? It could be small. It could be practical. It could be big. But are you there for your family to serve them? So one gift that you can give this season is the gift of service. I want you to think this way. I'm at the service of my family. I'm at the service of my family. How can I serve my spouse today? How can I serve my kids today? How can I serve my parents this week? How can I serve my siblings? How can I serve the family God has given me? I understand many times we just think of the nuclear family, which is good. But God has made us a part of an extended family as well. Your priority, though, is your nuclear family. Your priority is your nuclear, fa your nuclear family. Next to your nuclear fa family that God has given you, your spouse and your kids, are your parents. How can you serve your family? How can you be of help and of assistance to your siblings? Why? Because it is the beginning. Knowing how to give gifts to your family positions you and trains you to be better at giving gifts to the rest of the world. And we're going to look at that. We're going to look at our neighbors. We're going to look at those who are in need. We're going to look at the world. So please, how can you help your family? this season. I want you to imagine if you gave your family these five gifts that we've talked about today. Do you know what will happen? It will be easier for your family to see that God loves them. And I don't know if everyone in your family is saved, but whether they're saved or not, it will be easier for them to see that God loves them. If your family members are saved, it will be a confirmation it will just strengthen that, oh, God loves me. If they're not saved, it will be it, caring for the unsaved helps pave a way for the gospel in their hearts. It will make it easier. If you give your family these five gifts, you would be loving God by loving others well. If you give your family, these five gifts. You'll be loving God by loving others well. I know that when we think of family, we think of, you know, our biological family. We think of our family of or origin. I, I want to add here that you also have a spiritual family. The Bible describes the church as a spiritual family. The family of God. When you get born again, you're saved. You're incorporated into that family. Each local church is a part of this spiritual family of God. It is your spiritual family. And if you're a member of C6, a part of C6, C6 Church 
is your spiritual family. And my question to you is, how can you give these gifts that we've talked about to your spiritual family as well? How can you give these gifts we've talked about to your spiritual family as well? Right now, we are in the midst of doing our G5 90-day generosity challenge. And we have five areas, focus areas, as we try to, to, to raise money for these focus areas and to mobilize people to, to give of their time and of their talents in these five areas. Would you speak to God about how he wants want to use you as an individual and to use your family to give to the G5 generosity challenge. And all you need to do uh, as we close now, all you need to do if you want to give today is for you to follow the links below. Go to the go online or text the word give or G5 to the number below and it will take you where you need to go and give as the Lord impresses on your heart can we pray in closing father i pray that you'll help me and help my listeners to give these five gifts to our family today not just today but this season not just this season but always and i pray that you'll help us give give these five gifts to our spiritual family and for me, it's C6 Church. And I pray that you will show us how we can be a part of our G5 90-day generosity challenge so that we can give of our treasures in worship of you and give of our time and talents. Thank you, Father, for hearing us. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. May you make a difference in the lives of your family this week. See you next week. Bye.